Hi everyone. What we're going to do today is take a look at quadratic modeling. So we're going to take a look at some data and we are going to find a quadratic equation to model the situation and then we will answer some questions regarding it. So here's the data that we're going to consider today. We have a table that shows us several years and the percentage of high school students that smoke cigarettes for those selected years. So the first thing we want to do is plot our data. And in red here, I have described how we're going to do that. So the first thing you'll do is hit the stat button and then hit edit. Then you will plug your data values in and your final result should look like this. Remember the X values are going to go in list 1 and the Y values are going to go in list 2. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that the plot is on so that we can see our data values. So if you go to your Y equals button, scroll up, hit enter, scroll down, plot 1 should be highlighted like this. The next thing we need to do is set a window. So taking a look at our x values, the smallest x value we have is 6. So we should choose something smaller than 6, perhaps 0. And our biggest x value in this case is 23. So we should choose something larger than 23 for the x max, say 30. Take a look at our y values. The smallest y value we have is 20. We should choose something smaller. I tend to choose 0. And our biggest y value is 39. We should pick something larger than that, say 45. The final result of your window should look something like this. You don't have to choose exactly the values that I did, but something smaller than your smallest value and bigger than your biggest value will work. You should now see a graph that looks about like this after you hit your graph button. In part A, we're asked to use shifting and scaling of the square function to find a model that closely represents our data. So what we know first of all is that we should be starting with a negative square function since our data is facing downwards. What we also know is that we are going to shift this initially to fit that top point right there, which is the vertex of our parabola. So taking a look at our data, we can see that the very highest y value occurs at an x value of 12 and a y value of 39. What this means is that we need to shift our quadratic um, 12 units to the right in order to get to that vertex, and then up 39 to hit that vertex. So initially our quadratic function will look like this. Remember that putting x minus 12 inside of our square function is going to shift us to the right 12. Plus 39 outside of our function is going to shift us up 39. Hitting graph we should see something like this. And what we can tell is that we are going to have to make our quadratic wider in order to fit our data points. So remember what is going to do that for us is by multiplying outside of our function by a value that is between 0 and 1. Initially I chose a value of 0 0.4 to multiply by and here is what my graph looked like. We can see that we need to make this parabola wider even still, so we need to choose a value that is smaller than the 0.4 that we already chose. We are basically just guessing and checking until we find something that's a really good fit. I found a value of about 0.17 to be a pretty good fit here. But I feel like if I shift the graph right just a little bit more, it will fit the points even better. So remember, we choose the top value in our y values for our data 
to be our maximum, but we can still shift the function left or right a little bit if it's going to make a better fit. Here is what my final fit looks like, and here is what my final equation looks like. Yours may be slightly different, but it should be somewhere right around these values to be a good fit for our data. So here's the final equation for r of x that we are going to be using for the rest of our calculations. Part b asks us to explain the choices for the values. The negative reflected us over the x-axis so that our parabola was facing down. The 0.17 made our parabola wider. And the negative 12.2 shifted our graph to the right to fit our vertex. The plus 39 shifted it up so that we could fit the vertex. The next thing we are asked to do is use our function to estimate the percent of high school students that smoked cigarettes in 2011. From our table above, we can see that 2011 is an x value of 21. So essentially what we are doing is finding r of 21 replacing all of our x values with 21. In our calculator, it should look like this. And what we can see is that we get a value of about 25.8% according to our model. Taking a look at our table, our table said that in 2011, we had 25% of high school students smoking. So this is a slight overestimate of the actual value for that year, but it is still pretty close. The last thing we are asked to do is use our function r of x to algebraically determine the years in which the percentage of high school students that smoke is 5%. So remember, our percentages were the y values, and so what we're going to do to solve this in this case is replace r of x with the value that we have, which is 5. And we're going to solve for the x values, which represent the years. To solve for x, we need to isolate the square part of our equation. Our first step is going to be to subtract 39 from both sides. Our next step is going to be dividing both sides by negative 0.17. At this point, to undo the square, we are going to take the square root of both sides of our equation. Remember that when we take the square root of both sides of an equation, we do get two values, one positive and one negative. And also remember that the point of taking the square root is that the square root and the square are going to cancel, leaving us just with x minus 12.2 on the right. Adding 12.2 to both sides will allow us to solve for our two x values in the calculator. Our two values then will be 12.2 plus or minus the square root of 200. So remember the two things we're plugging into the calculator are 12.2 plus the square root of 200, hit enter, 12.2 minus the square root of 200, hit enter. The two x values we get will be 26.3 and negative 1.9. Remember our starting year was 1990, so we should add 1990 to both of these values to determine the years. So our final answer here should be during the years of 2016 and 1988 or when 5% of high schoolers were smoking. If we want to check ourselves graphically, since we already have our equation in Y1, we can put the value of 5 in Y2 and find the intersection and double check that what we did algebraically is correct. If we hit the second button and then the trace button, that will get us to our calculate functions and we want to choose number 5, which is the intersect feature. 
this is one of our easiest features. If we hit enter, 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 it should give us one of our intersections. Here we see negative 1.9, which is what we found algebraically. In order to find the other intersection, we have to do second trace again, hit intersect, but before you hit enter, 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 scroll closer to the intersection that it did not choose the first time around. Here is what my second intersection looked like. We got an x value of 26.3, which is what we found algebraically. I hope this has been helpful. Yay math!